All right, we're recording. Hey guys, this is Adam in the Underground. I am here with In the Pit interviews with Cherry Bomb. Te go around, tell everyone who you are, what you play, and then we'll just get started. Ladies first. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my name is. Uh, Your name's Casey. Casey, and I play guitar. <laughs> my name's Miranda. I play keyboards, rhythm guitar, and lead vocal. I'm Rena. I play bass and lead, and I do. <laughs> that was, I'm Mia, and I play drums. Well, first I want to thank you guys for sitting down with me, taking time. Like I said before, it only took seven months. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. No, it is what it is. I saw you I saw you guys on Warped Tour, and you absolutely, I was floored. Um, and uh, you're definitely one of those groups where I get, I love to show people and then go, yes, these people are younger than all of your siblings. Because it, you know, what what and it kind of depresses me a little bit because we all wish we could have that kind of talent. Um, but the first thing that I wanted to get into is your your uh, debut full length album, studio album. This is the end of control. It was released in May of last year in 2012. So it's been almost a full year since it since it's come out, and I believe it got like all the way to like what 25 24 on the heart seekers charts i mean what has been almost a full year has passed so kind of talk about where you are after having released the album and a, and a whole year has gone by it's funny a year feels like such a long time it like you know it's so many different things have happened since then and that, i mean it was an amazing experience for all of us uh, and i think we're really excited because you know we're going to be working on a second album and it's sort of like the second step in finding who we are Oh well, you're, you're you're jumping ahead in with, with all the questions. I I was, I was gonna no no it's good. I was gonna get it's like ESPN right. Um, that was a Mean Girls reference. Um, but one of the things that struck me so much about the album and even about your your the Stark EP is that there's so much. I was listening to the album today and there are so many different influences that are. I mean, you must, this this must come up all the time. You must get the Runaways, you know, thing all the time. But I hear stuff that's not just, it's not just Joan Jett. I, I was listening to it, and I'm hearing grunge influences. I mean, I'm hearing Nirvana. I'm hearing um, Alice in Chains. I'm hearing, like, really kind of, like, you know, alternative. It's no secret that you guys are big Foo Fighters fans. Yeah, you know? <laughs> And, uh... <laughs> You know, and I'm hearing like I'm I'm even hearing like glam rock. You know, just stuff that there are all these different styles. And so, who kind of has do you guys all have the same musical taste, or does someone kind of like love glam metal, or and someone likes alternative rock? I mean, how do you yes. kind of put that together? We actually we all have kind of different musical tastes, uh, like personally, but together we really like Foo Fighters, Paramore. Um, oh my God, yeah, Muse and. Personally, like I'm a big fan of uh, Nine Inch Nails, A Perfect Circle. I really love Josh Fries as a drummer. He's amazing. Mia likes a lot of eclectic stuff, mm. and Brian and I like jazz to like classic rock to metal to. <laughs> we're like all over the place. <laughs> we're all over the place. We're messes. And then Kate. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Tell me what you like. I want to know what I want to know what everyone likes. Come on, he just likes whatever. I just like whatever. Yeah, good yeah. luck getting any answers out of him. We've yeah. tried. It's like. It's, it, we'll ask him questions, he's like, well, I could go for this, or that, or that, or that. It's like, come on, man. Make, make a decision. The most indecisive of all guitar players, right? It's just crazy, because us three are so picky, and he's just like, all right, I'll go with whatever, and we're like, no, no, that's not what we want. Um, so... You know, we, it, it's no... So this is, this is really kind of like one of the, one of the topics. It's no... It, the the big piece of, of news is that Casey came in after Cherry Bomb and Julia kind of parted ways. And um, the reasons that were given to those of us who accepted them were that you're moving in different directions musically, creatively. Um, and so the big question that I'm curious about is how is this new element, the new dynamic going to affect the you know the band how is it going to affect the music the writing is there going to be more experimentation you know kind of even the live show how is it going to change things well definitely having any different band member is going to be totally different musically just because you know everyone has their own creative input and 
you know, he has his own influence, and he's just laughing at me now, <laughs> which is great. But, um, I don't know, I mean, we're trying to go more, we want to we wanna be more reachable with our music now, and Casey's up for whatever, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's been helping us out, he's amazing at the guitar thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> is that a technical term? That is yeah. a technical term. No, but he's, he is, oh, sorry, I'm talking about you in the third person, but he's really, like, he brings a different, a completely different element that's great with the band, and we really click together. Mm -hmm. So you, so let's jump, let's jump off that for a minute. You all, you say you want to go in a, in a more uh, reachable direction so that people are able to kind of better um, access your music. Is that, are you looking for something that's maybe a little bit more pop or something? Are you, I mean, you're going to experiment with different musical styles? <laughs> we're, we're, trying to, we're, we're trying to do like Limp Bizkit meets, meets like Nickelback. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, um, wow. Actually, How about Ra Rage Against the Machine and Paramore? Oh, yeah, wow, that go. sounds good. Go. We're really just trying to experiment. Definitely, like we want to. We kind of we're good with going pop. We're good with this and that. It's mostly just about experimentation, and that's the most fun of rehearsals. Is being like, let's try this out, and everyone's like, yeah, let's go for it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Well, something that um, that <laughs> that is so striking to me about about your sound, um, I mean, your sound and your image, is that there are, I, there are a lot of groups out there that have uh, female vocals. You know, that are rock bands that have female vocals, but I really think that Cherry Bomb has hit. A very nice, um, you, you you have a, a nice balance because it's really it, at least in your first album you're much less pop than a lot of uh, a lot of your contemporaries. I mean, you really it really is straight hard rock. You have hard drums, you have hard uh, rhythm sections with with the bass, right. and you have um, really like killer guitar riffs. And it's not something that's just you know pop is wonderful, but there is a harder edge to your to your sound, and do you think that that's something that you kind of want to put aside for right now, or is that something that you're going to retain? I um, think uh, I don't want to have pop and rock influences because we all, you know, we can relate to pop, we can relate to rock. I mean, we'll listen to Katy Perry and then we'll listen to Corn. I mean, you know, it it kind of goes all over the place, and I feel like if we can reach both sides, that we can sort of send a message to a lot more people. Right. Absolutely. And so you did. A bunch of dates on Warp Tour last year. Yes. And then you did, if memory serves, a tour with Lost Profits. Yeah. I'm a huge Lost Profits fan. And then you did three sold out nights at the Viper Room, right? Just recently, which is where you all popped the question to him. <laughs> and, and now we're married. <laughs> and, and then and then you guys are playing the Troubadour in like a week, right? Oh, yeah. And I mean, wow! Sorry, about to explode some soda. <laughs> I miss Dr Pepper so much. They don't have it here in Amsterdam. They don't. That's the only flaw of Amsterdam seen. that I've ever heard. Wow, right. Or it might be more. It's like more expensive. Yeah. Oh really? I miss oh, it. I miss it so much. So you win. <laughs> but so I mean, look, the Viper Room and the Troubadour. These are huge, huge names. I mean, that's like where Motley. Motley Crue played, and, and all these, like, L.A. glam bands, you know, from the Strip. What is it like to be, I mean, playing in these iconic, iconic venues, you know? And, I mean, you guys are clearly gearing up because you're doing more and more and more in a shorter amount of time. Are you gearing up for another tour? Or, I mean, and if so, is it going to be a U.S. tour? Is it going to be a European tour? What are fans going to see in the next few months over the summer? Well, right now we're playing a lot of local shows and trying to put a show together. Um, you know, I think we're focusing right now on writing. So, yeah, but we do have a lot planned. Um, hopefully we'll get some more tours this summer. We're really excited for all that stuff. I'm so excited to go back out and tour, too. I miss it. Yeah, you guys love touring. We have so much planned. We're so excited. It's crazy. Yeah, your tour video for Warp Tour, that was like things you don't hear on Warp Tour, I showed that to all my, I showed that to a bunch of bands, and they're like, this is so clever. This is so true. Thank you. Um, I, I got to ask this just because I think it's funny every time I see status updates on Facebook. You're all under 18, right? Or you're all under 21. Yeah. So what is it like to basically go and play a show and then get kicked out before the headliners? 
It's actually pretty funny. <laughs> it's, yeah, it, we, so. I think the first time it ever happened was a few years ago at, at Trip, I think, yeah, right? Mm-hmm. And um, we're like, we're, we usually, we help set up and everything, and um, they wouldn't let us go in to help set up. They're like, you go in, and then you come out. And we needed an escort to go in and out. So we were kind of bummed about that because it was the first time. Uh, not being allowed in the venue. Now we just kind of laugh about it. But, yeah. like, at the Viper Room, we played with Buck Cherry for three nights in a row, but we couldn't watch them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they put All we wanted to do was watch the show. <laughs> so, but, do yeah. you guys do, like, pavement tours, like, pavement concerts where you just sit outside and... We did. We actually, um, when we were touring with... Uh, Buck Cherry. It was with Buck Cherry and Lit. Um... There were a couple oh. dates uh, that we weren't allowed in the venue at all, and they, like... Was it in Utah? It was in Utah. Oh, my God. We we did what we called the sidewalk tour, and we played <laughs> acoustic shows outside of the venue. People started putting tips in the guitar case, and then we went and got dinner with the money that we got. That's and it was great. delicious. It was. It was so good. And so there were two waiters. Thank you, Utah. <laughs> Thanks, Utah. <laughs> I mean, so do you guys find that... I mean, Buck Cherry and Lit are two very different bands in their sound. A- a- as is Lost Prophets. You know, their lit is kind of more pop punk, if memory serves. Buck Cherry's got that hard rock thing going. And Lost Prophets are just kind of, you know, just alternative. I mean, I love all three bands, but they all have very different, very unique sounds. So do you find it very easy to tour, you know, with, with these different groups and just kind of fluidly be able to work with e- each of these, you know, musicians, these artists? I think the experience... Oh, no. Just echoing. Sorry. I thought the experience with... Sorry, let me just turn this down for a second. Oh, okay, that was weird. Um, I, I think the experience with going on tour with a bunch of different bands is awesome because we experience different crowds, um, their reactions. It's just, it's really fun. I mean, our first tour was with Smashing Pumpkins, and that's a completely different crowd from Lost Prophets. So it's right, just, right. I mean, there are some groups that go out, and if they're like, like a metal band, they'll only go out with metal bands, which is great if you're, you know, working for the metal audience. But it's, it's not really broadening your your reach, you know, yeah. like you guys talked about. And but some groups aren't really comfortable doing, you know, shows with people who have, you know, because everyone is into different things. Okay. Um, but so you guys have found it kind of easy to to just kind of move from one to another. Yeah, I think it's pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. As long as we're touring. <laughs> yeah, and, and we get to meet new people, new artists, and with the sound that we have, we're kind of pop, we're kind of rock. We've been, we've even been told that we're pop punk in some of our songs, so it's easy to mold with some of the bands that want to go out on tour with us. If it's a heavier band, we pick maybe some heavier songs, and we'll throw a couple of the pop <clears throat> ones in there. But for the most part, we get bands that kind of sound like us but are a little bit different in style. It just always works. Right. So so what were some of your favorite groups on Warp Tour last year? Because that's, you know, that's that's what I can that's what I can can discuss about because there were so many good bands when I went to when I went to the Atlanta date. Um, there were I hadn't been to Warp Tour in a couple of years. There were so many new groups that that just kind of came out of nowhere that were so amazing to listen to. We loved Vampires Everywhere. We went to their shows like, Probably every, like every other day. It was so funny. <laughs> every other day. Um, no, but we loved uh, Vampires, Mighty, Mighty Mongo. Mongo. Um, Tonight oh, they gave a great show. They, they played right after you guys, didn't they? Mighty Mongo? Yeah. They make us so happy. <laughs> and then, okay, we were like, on the last day, we went to go watch their show, and we were literally like crying. Because we didn't want to leave. Yeah. <laughs> they, they make you so happy. It's ridiculous. Oh, no. They're definitely... I, I sat down with Alex after his show, and the, the, he's just such a nice guy. And I... I When I saw... I was... I mean, he was doing, like, slides over the stage, and he's wearing shorts, and he gets up, and he's got, like, blood coming out of his knees, and I'm just like, yeah. God, that is so punk rock. That's a, that's what people show up to work Tour to see. Yeah, right. It was it was crazy on Warp. Scotty, the drummer, um, we there was a drum off that happened, and he was right. Um, I was there. I was in the back. I was in the press section. That I, was drum off the best thing. Yeah, ever. it was insane. So it was cool. insanely like, cool. Like, I want to do that. <laughs> I was I was like a foot away from LP, the drummer from Yellow Card. Oh, oh don't even! Oh my god! So I am I am a diehard, diehard Yellow Card fan. I love all their old stuff. I've seen them like six or seven times. I saw them in Boston last year. 
I love yellow cards. So for me to be like, I could have grabbed his braid. I mean, I was like, it was like he's, that close. He's so nice. Did you get to meet him? No, I didn't get to. I. I mean, he was he was doing he, he was like emceeing the drum oh, off, and I didn't yeah. want to like you know be like, hey, dude, I'm such a huge yellow card fan, you know. <laughs> but, but it. But he was. I mean, he seems like a really nice guy, but it's like when you're like this close to one of like your idols, it's just like, yeah. oh my god. And the drum off was incredible. I tell people about it and they're like, how did you get in there? You know, but it's just like, it was only for the bands. That's what I thought was so cool for the bands and their like crews. Because, you know, after the shows end, I guess a lot of fans have this notion that you go, you get on your bus, you go find some place to eat and you just kind of leave. But to see all the groups kind of all together, you know, having fun together after the show that's a real eye-opener that I don't think a lot of people really get to see. And I think it'd be really cool if, like, next year that someone someone should video that and just kind of, like, put it up on YouTube. That's actually, we set up my drum kit after uh, a few of the shows, like, after everything was done, and everyone would just kind of gather around and just play. And I'm like, this is so beautiful. <laughs> like, drummers, like, guitarists, people, like, from who the hell knows where, just getting together and just, like, Playing together, it's just a beautiful experience. I totally agree. And on Warped Tour, it's like everything, like all of, all of the musicians, you just bond and you get together and you're all going through the same thing, like the two mile walks to your to your next show <laughs> because like the parking is two miles away and the heat and the storms and the lightning and it's just you're all going through the same thing, so you really bond. You're all brothers and sisters. So do you guys do you guys find that like you have now? Um, are there like any, besides, I guess, besides Mighty Mongo, are there other groups, I guess, in your area um, that you would love to do shows with, you know, that you've called up and said like, hey, let's go do like a five-date tour, you know, through like L.A. and San Diego or, you know, someplace like that? It would be really cool to tour with Tonight Alive. Because yeah, um, yeah. they're, they're amazing. Um, pretty much everyone on our stage. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Avion Rowe was really Avion good. Rowe was really but the whole Kevin Sides stage was kind of like a big family, which was really cool. And It was um, cool and depressing, because at the end, you're all just crying. Like, we <laughs> sort of literally sat there for one day just crying our eyes out. Like, we're not going to be... We don't want to leave. <laughs> oh. Well, I, I tell you what, I, I, loved, I loved seeing... You're right, it was a great lineup. And one thing that, that was so... You know, what I do every year after, after Warp Tour is you get on Wikipedia and you just go through every single band that's listed and you look for the, the, the diamonds, you know, because there are some, some groups kind of fit, you know, my show. Some groups don't necessarily fit, but they're amazing musicians. And I was so happy to, to get your album because, I mean, as, I, as soon as I started playing it on my show, it was, it, I mean, I got, people told me that, it, that this stuff was amazing. Um, and it really, really is. Sorry, one second, Adam. He's shutting off the speaker that's making a lot of noise. It's yeah, it was hissing at us. Yeah, it's it's like getting upset that we're doing an interview. <laughs> oh, just just upset that you're doing an interview with me. But it but you know but it's all right. Um, because if you want to call him back, I'm I'm we're getting close to the end, but we can do another interview. Um, oh, we're just gonna leave him. Just leave him. Oh no, he's back. No, he's back. I you know. Get up, it's fine. He's just he's just the guitar player. Uh, but you know, I, I we we are getting towards the end, and I wanted to take this, uh, you know, take a chance again to thank you guys so much. I know that you guys are very very busy. Like you said, you're working on new material, you're working on all kinds of stuff, and I really can't wait to get it and and play it on the show. Um, thank you so much. So if you guys want to take just a few seconds and tell Underground Takeover, tell everyone where they can find Cherry Bomb stuff. <laughs> You can go to our website, cherrybombband.com, and that's with an I, not a Y. Um, we're on Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, yeah. all under Cherry Bomb or Cherry Bomb Band, but that's all on the website. And that's we also have a YouTube page. That's we're all on the website. And then tell everyone where they can hear Cherry Bomb playing all the time, every day. On iTunes. On iTunes. <laughs> on iTunes. And, what, and what radio station is always playing Cherry Bomb? Aw. Underground Takeover, my friends. Underground Takeover. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much, Adam. Absolutely. We're going to do another interview very, very soon. Yes, please. All right, guys. This has been Adam and the Underground with Cherry Bomb in the Pit interviews. Peace.
Yeah.